What is up guys? Welcome to the 11th video of 25 days of flutter. Today we're going to be taking a look at the bottom navigation bar. So, so I just have a basic flutter application set up and our home is pointed to class navigation which is a stateless widget. So here is where we're going to add our bottom navigation bar. So the bottom nav bar is a property on the scaffold widget. So let me go be below the body and if we type bottom, we should see it pop up. So we'll tap on that. And this takes in the bottom navigation bar widget, just like that. And the first thing we're going to do is pass in our items. So these are the tabs that you want to have in your bottom nav bar. And we pass them in as a bottom navigation bar item. This takes in an icon. We'll just give it a home icon. And we are getting an error, and that is because we need at least two items. So let's go ahead and add a second one. And we also need to add a label. So below the icon, if we hit label, this is the text label. And this is new. It used to be uh, a title property, which took in a text widget, but now it is label. And we'll add one more. And there we go. As you can see, we now have our nav bar. So let me change this one. Change this to a message icon, messages. And let me add one more. We'll say profile and we'll give this a person icon. Perfect. So here's our app bar, but at the moment it doesn't do anything. And that is because we haven't added any logic behind it. So let's go ahead and do that now. And I am realizing right now that this needs to be a state full widget. So let me go ahead and convert this to a state full widget. All right, there we go. Pretty quick fix, just adding these three lines and changing this line. So now to add the logic behind this nav bar, we're gonna do a couple of things. First, we need to declare an integer, and this will be the selected index, and we'll set that to zero. And that is saying when the user first opens the app, the uh, I, icon in the zeroth position will be selected, in this case, home. Now we need a method with a return type void. We'll call this on item tap. This will take in an index. And what it will do is it will set the state. And it will set the selected index, this variable, equal to the index it took in. And you might be wondering how we are getting this index. And if we go down to our app bar, at the bottom, we can set those properties. So it takes in a current index. That will be the selected index. And then it also takes in an on tap listener. And on the tap, we want to call the on item tap method, just like that. We don't want to invoke it. All right, so let's see if this works. There we go. So as you can see, as I click, we are selecting that icon. But nothing is happening up here. And that is because our body is a hard-coded text. What we can do is we can come up here, list and we're gonna name, we're gonna say type string first, and then we'll change this to type widget. We'll call it widget options, and we'll set that equal to a list. So home messages and profile. And then what we're going to do is we will set the uh, body text, instead of it being a hard-coded string, we can set that equal 
to widget options dot element at the selected index and that is this right here just like that now we have home and if I click messages we see messages just like that so everything is working a lot of the time you don't want text to be displayed you want an actual page so what we can do is we can change this list to be a list of widgets and then we can change these to be corresponding uh, classes. So let me come down to the bottom here and create three classes. They'll all be stateless widgets. This will be home. This will be messages. And this will be profile. And each of them will return a container with a child the, with a child of center with a child of text this will be home this will be messages and this will be profile now you can come back up here and we can pass those in we'll say home messages and profile and now we are getting an error because we don't need this text widget anymore so let's remove that and as you can see we're getting the same text but it's coming from these classes and to really show that we can give the container each a different color maybe red Give it a refresh and the background color will change as well. Now I also want to mention that if you are using data of any sort, so interacting with an API or something like that, every time you leave the page and then go back to it, that will refresh and it will fetch the data again. And you probably don't want this. So to fix this, we can wrap the body in a widget called index stack. So if I refactor this, I can say wrap with widget. We'll change that to an indexed stack. And then inside of this index stack here, we're going to set the index to the selected index. And we're going to set the children the widget options just like that. And then we need to change child to children. And this will be a list like that. And we'll format that up and everything should work as expected. There we go. So let me go ahead and show you guys what that did. So let me go ahead and change all these to stateful widgets. All right, there we go. So we have all three of our stateful widgets now. And what I'm going to do is add a method that will print uh, out text. Okay, so I have for each of these uh, three classes up here. So for each of these classes, home, messages, and profile, I change them to stateful widgets. So profile, messages and home and I gave each of them an init state method which simply prints out this text here calling init state for and then the name of the class so let me open up a debug console so if I do a hard re refresh as you can see we call init state for every single one now, as I navigate to each one, we're not calling it again. 
So that is it for the bottom navigation bar widget. The actual widget does take in additional properties such as the selected font size or the selected icon theme in different colors. So I encourage you to play around with that and test some of them out. But in the next video, we are going to move on from widgets and really start working with the data. And we're going to look how to work with basic JSON. So we're going to talk about serialization and deserialization.